here is your question and here is your Right, so if you have read and understood, kindly begin your examination station. Yes, yes, ma'am, I'm ready, inshallah. So um, I will start by wash my hand, uh, yes. then welcome the patient. Uh, hello, I'm Mr. Ghaziri, one of surgical doctors here. Can I confirm your name and the age, please, sir? Robert Israel, 54 years old. Nice to meet you, sir. Today I'm going to examine your breast. At, uh, will include uh, look uh, and feel your breast and also feeling glands in your neck and armpits. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes, do you have any pain at the moment? No. So do you want to uh, uh, considering attending a uh, sister at the chaperon or you don't need? No, you, you don't ask in this one, it's a male person. Yes, okay, so if you don't mind, can you take off your shirt, please? Okay, from waist to up, uh, up waist up, please. And you yes. can you sit on the couch, please? Okay. So uh, we will start by, uh, can you put your hands beside you, please? Then I will, uh, I will take a close look in your chest for any asymmetry, scar, prominent MS, or any nipple discharge or uh, skin manifestation of any cancer. And then after that, I will ask the patient, please, can you push your hands toward your hips, please? to detect any indentation or uh, uh, tethering. Mm -hmm. Then I will ask, can you lean forward for me, please? Okay, then can you, uh, excuse me, can you push your hands behind your head and push your elbow backward as much as you can? Then lean, uh, lean forward, please. So now can you uh, squeeze you, uh, your uh, nipple and the areola, please, of each side? between your uh, uh, thumb and index finger. Okay, so uh, now I will feel your wrist. If you feel any pain, let me know, and I will stop and it will be uh, gentle as much as you can. Okay, sir? So can you lean uh, on the couch, please? I will put the uh, bed on 45 degree. Uh, please, which, which side is concerning for you, or both uh, are concerning? Sir, you will both. evaluate yourself. It's both. It says bilateral. Both. Okay. So I will start to feel uh, both breast by uh, spiral movement uh, uh, clockwise, uh, starting from the nipple and the areola, um, a circular pattern uh, okay. till uh, with my, a flat of my hand to reach uh, completing the completion of the breast, uh, including the axillary tail. Then after that, if I feel any swelling, I will uh, comment on it by uh, uh, tensing the pectoralis major and comment on uh, sex uh, S and the attachment consistency, tenderness, age, and mobility. Then I will go to the other side also yes. to feel the breast, uh, the most important any mass or glandular tissue uh, under nipple and the areola. So after that, uh, can you please? Uh, 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 set to uh, feel glands in your arm a bit. I will take the weight of your uh, uh, arm, okay? Um, the right side, I will take the right arm on right uh, uh, in, in my right hand, and I'll feel by the, the left side, left, uh, left, my, uh, left hand, my left hand, uh, starting with pectoral group, subscapular group, central group, infraclavicular, and the lateral or humeral group, and then 
also will fill glands in the other arm a bit on the same pattern, okay? Uh, but with crossing the hand, uh, then I will ask the patient that now I will feel uh, uh, glands in your neck, including cervical, circular, and longitudinal group, also supraclavicular and infraclavicular one. So after that, and any one of them palpable, I will comment on as any mass, uh, sex S, and attachment to hotness, consistency, and mobility, and the number, size, and uh, consistency. So now, I, if you don't mind, ma'am, I will, uh, can you lean uh, uh, again to lean down on the couch, please? Now I will uh, um, examine your uh, tummy. It will include a look, feel, uh, a tab, and listen to your, your uh, tummy. So now uh, I will, can you take, a, uh, can you give me a cuff, please? Can you hold your press? Uh, then now I will uh, feel your tummy kneel downward Hello. to make a flat of my hand uh, along the axis of the of the abdomen. Do you have any pain at the moment? Then feel uh, light if, uh, palpation or nine area. Then deep, the most important to feel the liver starting from the right loop of the liver to the uh, from the right iliac fossa to feel the right loop of the liver. Uh, asking the patient, can you take a deep breath in and out, please? Upward till reach the uh, costal margin, then we'll feel the left loop uh, above the umbilicus. Uh, upward, taking uh, breath in and out. Then I will tap through your chest to detect the upper uh, border of the liver. Uh, after that, I will uh, go to feel the spleen from the right iliac fossa towards the left hypochondrium, and uh, then by manual examination for the kidney and aortic pulsation. Also, the most important, I will do a tap through your uh, tummy uh, to detect any uh, presence of um, uh, ascites. I will start from the midline and will go toward the right okay. iliac fossa. Bell has gone. Can you present your case now, please? Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for your time. You can dress now. Thank you for. I will pass my uh, notes to my consultant today. I examined uh, a 54 year old male who presented with bilateral enlargement or gynecomastia. Of yes. uh, bilateral breast enlargement. Okay, on examination, uh, there is no no just a bilateral enlargement of uh, breast uh, and with bulbable granular tissue under yes. nipple and areola. Otherwise, no bulbable uh, mass, no scar, no skin manifestation, or no signs of inflammation or uh, signs of malignancy. On uh, feeling the uh, axillary lymph nodes or cervical lymph nodes, no bulbable significant lymph nodes. Also, yeah. also I, I considered the abdominal examination at the patient is uh, cirrhotic with bulbable liver, about yes. three finger below the costal margin with yes. no bulbable ascites. The upper border at the fifth intercostal is bit mid clavicular line. Yes. So uh, no other organomegaly. Uh, so my top differential diagnosis is uh, a bilateral gynecomastia, mostly, yes. mostly due to a cirrhotic liver as the patient is alcoholic, but I will consider the other causes of bilateral gynecomastia in male gynecomastia in form of senility, drug-induced, testicular uh, tumor, bronchial uh, carcinoma, pituitary uh, tumor. Um, okay. So uh, to, to yes. figure out this, I will, uh, to complete my examination, I will chest examination, full abdominal examination, visual field, uh, external genitalia, Yes. Uh, to exclude any testicular tumor. And thyroid status as well, to be, rule out hypothyroidism. I'm sorry. Yes. Chest examination. I, I mentioned chest. Okay. Uh, uh, no, I said th thyroid. Uh, thyroid. Okay. Uh, what laboratory work would you ask for? Yes. Uh, uh, according to the laboratory, I will ask for free and total testosterone, LH, FSH, uh, TSH, thyroid profile. And also, I will consider the tumor markers if I suspect a testicular tumor, borolactin if I suspect any pituitary tumor. Okay. This uh, and the renal function for the uh, renal failure if I suspect any renal failure okay. and the liver function test. Okay. So what else would you advise to confirm your diagnosis? To confirm my diagnosis, I will uh, I will uh, order radiological investigation form Very of good. mammography. Yes. Mammography yes. if I suspect any mass. Yes. Uh, core biopsy or fine needle aspiration cytology yes. And, yes. and also maybe other radiology to figure out other causes of gynecomastia uh, yes. this for confirmation of the diagnosis besides the laboratory.
All right. And just take care. What yes. management can you offer to this patient? Yes, for this patient, I will offer to uh, search for the causative, causative uh, uh, factor or the cause of the gynecomastia, but I will consider the uh, reduction mammoplasty or uh, nipple uh, areola sparing mastectomy, uh, uh, just a subcutaneous okay. mastectomy. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, am, I am sorry for uh, noising as I am on uh, call. I realize. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Not I'm, I noticed I'm a lot of notifications yes. and announcements. Yes, I am sorry. I am sorry, ma'am. Yes, that's okay. No yes. problem. Uh, yeah. Right. It was very good. You covered everything. Thank you. Right. Uh, one thing, again, I will request you, even uh, even if it's, it's not mentioned, but when you are doing examination, you have to rule out for uh, temperature as well. When you're ten, ruling out tenderness, then you have to rule out the temperature as well, like if there is any inflammation underlying or anything so uh, i didn't hear roll out of what uh, temperature temperature yes yes Once yes you're yes, palpating yes 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 yes, yes. I, I i mentioned yes. any signs of inflammation but precisely i didn't mention yeah. temperature yet. yeah yes yes so yeah that would be good otherwise yeah. i think we covered everything so there was nothing thank you uh, left. Too thank you thank you thank you Good, and we are starting the timer, and here is the system. Right. If you have read and understood, considering this critical care scenario, kindly tell me how would you manage this patient? Yes, according to this patient. Yes. Um, uh, this is a uh, complaining of uh, uh, hypocalcemia leading to the uh, carbobidal is best. I will manage patient according to CRISP protocol in form of ABCD approach. The, yes. most, the most important is the confirmation of patent airways. The patient is Talking or not, uh, the, the patient is risky for laryngeal muscle spasm in this case of hypoglycemia. Yes. Adequate breathing is uh, is important with putting the patient in uh, oxygen, uh, mask oxygen, uh, confirming pulse oximeter uh, saturation is well and good. And circulation in form of hydration of the patient with two wide bore cannula, but considering give, give the patient uh, the proper uh, treatment after cardiac monitoring in form of calcium gluconate, 10 ml, 10% of calcium gluconate, followed by 10 to 40 ml of uh, insulin over uh, four to eight hours. After that, uh, I will uh, manage with cardiac monitoring. It's mo most important. After that, I will uh, evaluate the patient in form of disability as he, uh, he is risky for uh, irritability and confusion due to hypocalcemia. Uh, and the exposure for the, uh, of the patient for uh, uh, any presence of cramps or other twitches in other part of the body. Okay. Can you please yes. tell me in this uh, case, in this scenario, uh, immediately yes. calcium levels were checked and they were 1.5 millimole per liter. What are the normal values? According to milligram, from 9 to 11 milligram. But according to millimole, more than... Uh, uh, Two, two or 2.5. 2.5, yes. Okay, yes. can you please tell me how calcium is found in the body? Yes, according to 50% uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is in, uh, unbound and uh, ionized, and 5% yes. uh, is bound to uh, uh, citrate and uh, lactate, and 45% uh, is bound to plasma proteins. Yes, okay. Yes. Yes. What 
are the functions of calcium in, in human body? Yes, a muscle contraction, neurotransmitter and the neuromodulator, otherwise cell division, glycogen yes. metabolism, also yes. blood coagulation, catalyst in, for uh, activation of some enzymes, also, also, also a mineralization of the bone. Okay, when uh, this patient is having this uh, carpopedal spasm and hypocalcemia, so can yeah. you please tell me what are the other muscles that you are worried about, which yeah, can be affected? Muscle. And laryngeal muscles, respiratory muscles. Your respiratory muscles. Yes, yes, this is what I was thinking. Yes. Okay, can you please tell me uh, how calcium hormone is regulated, or the cal yes, how okay. calcium is regulated in yes. the body? Yes, according to three three hormones, parathyroid hormone, yes. vitamin D, and the calcitonin. As regard parathyroid hormone, it stimulates estocytic and estoclastic activity in the bone to yes. increase the bone resorption, increasing the calcium and the phosphate level in the blood. Also, activation of alpha one hydroxylase enzyme at the kidney to stimulate formation of one one twenty five dihydroxychloric calciferol, which is vitamin D, so indirectly increase in the stellar absorption of the calcium. This is the first one. The second one is vitamin D. Better. Okay. If vitamin D three that stimulate of the calcium and the calcium uh, avoid uh, excretion through the kidney and the increase in stellar absorption of the calcium and the increase bone mineralization. Calcitonin is uh, increase uh, protein senses and the protein and the uh, bone matrix decrease calcium resorption when is less than 2.5 and also uh, stimulate excretion calcium and uh, chloride phosphate and magnesium loss through okay. the kidney. Can you please yes. tell me what are the characteristic signs of hypocalcemia that you can look for? According to the CNS irritability and circum uh, peripheral and circum oral numbness. According to the uh, uh, the uh, muscle is uh, twitches or cramps, and the chuff stick uh, sign in form of uh, twitches of the facial muscles on tapping uh, facial nerve in front of the ear, and also through a C sign and inducing ischemia by uh, cuff uh, inflation with stabbing on the median nerve leading to uh, twitches of the uh, carbobidal spasm or uh, muscle spasm. Uh, this uh, and muscle cramps uh, also and uh, okay can uh, you please tell yes. me how uh, what are the symptoms or signs of hypoglycemia how the patient presents yes as uh, i mentioned that the patient uh, presented with irritability circumoral numbness and also muscle uh, cramps or twitches um, uh, and um, yeah, absence of calcium may lead to uh, bleeding tendency as it share in the blood coagulation. Uh, hypocalcemia or hypercalcemia? Yes. Hypercalcemia? Hypo. Okay. Hypo. Can you also please tell me uh, if you are considering hypercalcemia, so yeah. abdominal pain can be different, differentiated from what other conditions? Yes, uh, the most important uh, increase the acidity leading to uh, beta ulcer disease. And the second one is acute pancreatitis. The third one may be due to urinary stone, urinary stone leading to renal colic. Okay. Yes. Can you please tell me? Oh, you've already told me how to treat. Yes. Okay. Mm, yes. The management of uh, hypocalcemia as well. Hypocalcemic tetany. Right, muscles. Okay. What are the signs of hypocalcemia? You've already told me. What would you look for in ECG? In ECG? Sign? Yes. In ECG. Prolonged QT interval, hyperactive, and what else? Okay. This we can do. Long, long, long QT interval? Yes. And, uh, and um, wide QRS? Uh, big B wave. All right. You have already told me, right, the steps, how vitamin D is formed or how is it metabolized? Calcium, how, how, how metabolized? Vitamin D, yes, is formed. Vitamin, is formed? Yes, vi vitamin, vitamin D is uh, formed by 
uh, presence of cholesterol in the liver will be uh, will be uh, in the uh, uh, by ultraviolet rays in the skin will be uh, developed into uh, converted into cold calciferol in the liver will be hydroxylated to to 25 uh, hydroxy cold calciferol and in the kidney will be hydroxylated by alpha 1 hydroxylase into dihydroxy cold calciferol okay. vitamin D3 based yes. on the value of uh, calcium how can you classify yes. hypocalcemia Yes, uh, as regard uh, uh, between uh, 9 to 11 is latent, and below, uh, below uh, 9 milligram per deciliter will be manifest. Okay, so mild, moderate, and severe hypocalcemia. Yeah. Okay. Right, you have already, okay, well then, but you have already told me the physiological functions or role of calcium in the human body. Yes, it's good. You knew everything, kind of, because I stopped you as well and you knew everything, so... Thank you. All right, great, thanks. Uh, did you tell me where calcium protein is formed? Yes. Uh, How is it? Not physiological, but then. Calcitonin. Calcitonin, yes. Increase the calcium, increase the mineralization of the bone. Yes. By stimulate, stimulate reabsorption of calcium and phosphorus from the, the, through the kidney. Yes. 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 I told, I told this. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, good, thank you. Started the timer and here is your question. Right. If you have read and understood, considering it critical care scenario, kindly tell me how would you manage this patient? Yes, according to this scenario, I will manage the patient according to CRISP protocol in form of A, B, C, D, A protocol. As this patient is suspected, he has anterior cutaneous fistula. So I will consider um, uh, sepsis control yes. and the nutritional support yes. uh, with, life, with the dietitian uh, for proper caloric intake. Uh, the, the other thing is adequate fluid and electrolyte uh, imbalance correction, either uh, through central uh, venous line with TBN, and also um, uh, 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 protect the skin by uh, putting the stoma back uh, and uh, preparation the patient uh, and put the plan, the plan either conservative treatment or yes. surgical treatment. Yes. The conservative treatment usually. Uh, resolve within uh, with about 60%. Okay, what considering... would you discuss in your MDT? MDT. So I will discuss in MDT uh, about uh, the, the, uh, that, uh, with the dietitian about the nutritional the support, caloric right. intake. Yes. And, and right. otherwise, the plan of treatment. Yes. Either, is either conservative treatment or surgical treatment. Yes. The role of conservative treatment is sepsis control with absence of infection or abscess or distal obstruction by considering uh, imaging of the patient in form of CT with oral and IV contrast with fistulogram to delimit the uh, track lens, fistula localization of the okay. fistula and the absence okay. of the distal obstruction, yes. Yes, is it possible for you to classify the fistula? 
Is it possible to what? Classify intracutaneous fistula. Classified, uh, yes. classification, to, yes. I, I output fistula, low output fistula. According to the output, if yes. more than 500 ml per 24 hours, it's yes. high output fistula. Less than this, with absence of intra-abdominal collection, we consider this is low output fistula. Any other classification methods? Another could classification. Congenital could be acquired. It could be yes, maybe of maybe the congenital as yes, uh, maybe congenital or acquired in form of uh, vitellointestinal fistula as uh, phallomesenteric uh, duct, uh, and the acquired fistula maybe due to uh, after uh, resection and stomosis uh, with presence of ischemia or infection. Uh, may be acquired or also okay. due to specific disease as Crohn's disease yes. may be acquired also. Yes. And after and because of anatomy yes. and because of physiology as well. Okay, can you please yes. tell me what images can you ask for this patient to confirm your diagnosis? Yes, CT abdomen and the pelvis with fistula and the fistulogram to delineate the track lens. Yes, the localization of the fistula, exclusion of distal obstruction, absence yes. of abs uh, of intra-abdominal collection or abscess collection. Yes. Okay, can yes. you please tell me if you don't manage, if you don't get to manage the uh, fistula on time, if yes. yes, what are the complications that you can expect? Yes, is that the most common complication is in form of sepsis, infection, uh, malnutrition, uh, fluid and electrolyte disturbance. The sepsis may proceed to uh, sepsis or uh, multiple organ uh, dysfunction or yes. septic shock. Uh, uh, this uh, regarding the, the complications. Okay, what are, uh, can you tell me what might be the reason that this patient can be brought to uh, operation theater within 24 hours? What are, what? Uh, what is might the, be again? the reason if a patient has uh, intracutaneous fistula, what yes. can be the reason which brings the patient to the operation theater? Yes, uh, the uh, failure of conservative management, yes. presence of sepsis or peritonitis, presence yes. of collection, uh, presence of high output fistula, specific pathology. More inform important is disease. distal obstruction. Distal obstruction. Okay. Yes. Can you please tell me what are the signs of intra abdominal sepsis? Yes, according to uh, generally and locally, yes. generally the patient yes. will be presented with uh, sepsis in form of uh, hyper hy hyperdynamic or hypodynamic uh, state of septic shock. Uh, and also abdominally, the patient will develop. Um, Developed the uh, uh, protonitis, manifestation of protonitis, tenderness, about tenderness, and protonism. And also, according to lab investigation, increased white blood cells, CRB, and the mal malnourishment in form Dr. of hypoalbuminemia and mm -hmm. elevated liver enzymes. Yes. Okay. Can you please tell me what are the risk factors which lead to enterocutaneous fistula? Yes. That can be avoided. One. Yes. Yes. Instant anastomosis, presence of ischemia, infection, yes. uh, malignancy. Foreign body, distal obstruction uh, after anastomosis, or a specific pathology in form of uh, Crohn's disease. Okay, what are the factors which prevent spontaneous healing or the closure of the wound? Or uh, the, the presence of distal obstruction, presence yes. of uh, yes. related infection, foreign body or foreign access, body. Yes. radiation, radiation, ischemia, uh, high output fistula, malnourishment. Or specific yes. basal in form of Crohn's disease or malignancy. Could there be any other complications other than metabolic disturbances that can occur? Uh, complication other than metabolic disturbance? Yes. So, like dehydration, uh, there could be skin excoriation. Fluid and yes, fluid electrolyte disturbance, excoriation, excoriation of the skin, Sylvia. and the malnourishment. And the malnourishment. Severe. 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 Okay. Severe. Can you please tell me? Do you have to go, Doctor Mahmoud? They are saying Severe. code blue. Severe. No, no, not, Severe. not for me. Severe. Code blue, Severe. not for me. Okay. Or, uh, I... Can you please tell me why this patient would be ac acidotic? A patient with yes, ECF can be acidotic. Why? Severe. Due to hypo, due to hypovolemia and the, uh, the patient septic septic shock. Due to sepsis. Yes, so sepsis. The, there, the there is disease. loss of alkaline per, uh, yes. alkaline fluids. And, alkaline okay. Yes. Right.
All right. Can you please tell me how would you take care of the nutrition of the patient? Yes, I will. Uh, uh, firstly, the patient, if managed, I will uh, lies with ITU or HDU to manage patient here. Discuss the patient nutrition with MDT, with dietitian, considering that the normal requirement 25 to 30, but in this cases with severe malnourishment will increase to 45 to 55 kilocalories per, per kg. Okay. All right. Uh, if you take blood, blood labs of the patient and uh, you find out that sodium is low, potassium is low, bicarb is also low. So what would you suspect? Low, low sodium. Uh, low potassium, potassium, low bicarbonate. Low bicarb. Yes. I would or you can it. tell me where bicarbonate is mostly produced. Mainly from bicarbonate juice. Very good. Okay. So if uh, that... Uh, small bowel, small bowel fistula. Okay. Yes. yes. Mostly, mostly upper, uh, upper small bowel. Very good. Okay. Yes. It's very difficult. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes, if you can help me to read this. Imaging. This is this is what we call a fistulogram. Yes. Fistulogram with yes. the radio radio uh, uh, catheter from the outside. Yes. Delineating delineating the uh, the uh, the fistula lens into the distal bowel. Yes. Okay. Uh, can I just say thank you? This is good. Uh, I was telling, I was asking you for uh, the signs of intra-abdominal sepsis. So the first yes. signs would be that patient will feel nauseating, vomiting. There'll yes. be swinging pyrexia, and then yes. there'll be abdominal pain, tenderness, yes. rigidity, and then okay, hypertension, tachycardia, because patient is going in shock. So yes, you did yes. tell me shock, but uh, I want you to hear swinging pyrexia because yes. uh, that is kind of the key. Yes. Good, thank you. Thanks, ma'am. 